Emmanuel. Our message today, what God requires. Let someone say, what God requires. Once again, I know everyone will want to hear this. You really want to know what God requires? That is what God wants from me. What God wants from you. Amen. Go now, we worship you. Son of God, you are so new. Oh, my God, almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Lord, oh, me, values in man is beyond human discernment. What God values in me is beyond human discernment. And this is planted in the heart. The book of Colossians 3 verse 10 says, In our heart we are made to be like Jesus. You may have oblong face, round face, fat, thin, short, tall. In our heart we are made to be like Jesus. When mice agree in a relationship. What is seen, what circumstances look like, what people say or what people do consigning the relationship cannot affect it. What God requires of me, of you, does not consist in the fat of rams, burnt offerings, costly sacrifice, praying and fasting, or waving of hands in worship without a thorough reformation of heart and life. What Jesus requires is planted in our heart. In First Samuel chapter 15, I take my reading from verse 22. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Some men said to King Saul, it is better to obey the law than to sacrifice the best sheep to him. Costly sacrifice to him. Rebellion against God is as bad as witchcraft. Arrogance is as Sinful as idolatry. When we walk with the Lord in
you may be seated many who will regularly part with their sacrifice will not be persuaded to part with their sin it is easy to part with our belongings but it is very difficult to part with sin. To part with your trillion dollars, your estates, your money, your property. But very difficult to part with sin. What then does God require of us? Ask your neighbor. I can hear you. Let me take you to the book of Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contract heart. A broken and contract what? That is a repentant and penitent spirit. I mean to be very sorry for wrongdoing. Foolish people don't care if they sin. Good people want to be forgiven. Each time good people commit sin, they are troubled in their mind. Troubled because it is not their way to sin. When you get home, open your Bible to the book of Psalm 40, verse 12, Psalm 38, verse 4, Romans 7, verse 15. 
and uh, Proverbs 14, verse 9. In other words, those who will come to God must do so with humility and sincerity of mind. Not confession in the form of waving of hands in worship without a thorough reformation of heart and life. Man may do much by outward restraints, but only God can help them to stop sin. My pastor is coming. I don't want to smoke. I'm a Christian. I don't want to lie. I am born again. I don't want to drink alcohol. Without God being involved, you will fail. We get up in the morning determined to get it right. Before we know it, we have sinned. Every time we determine to do what is right. Before we know it, something else, something contrary, crosses our mind. This is what Paul meant in that book of Romans 7, verse 15. My desire is to do good but I find myself doing what is against my desire. This is my desire. Determined to do what is right, something else, something contrary, 
crosses your mind. This shows that sin is a spiritual thing. Unless God is involved, no one can say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Tell your neighbor. Paul was quick to confess. Acting against his own way. I want to eat apple, but I find myself eating what? Carrots. Can you see? I find myself eating what? Acting against my own will. Sin is a spiritual thing. No one can say no to sin or yes to righteousness unless God is involved. Draw me close to you. Thank you very much. Never uh -huh. let me go. I lay it all down again. Thank you, thank you, wonderful. To see you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. Lord Jesus, no one else will do. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. What she been? It's a wonderful song. Because nothing else can take your place hallelujah hallelujah to feel the warmth of your embrace thank you lord help me find a way help me find a way bring me back bring me back to you
message man may do much by outward restraints I want you to know that it is not a matter of combining strength this is God's strength this is your strength it is not a matter of Johnny's strength, combining our own strength with God's strength. It is a matter of exchanging our strength with God's strength. Forget about yours. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to smoke. No, no. Look. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't tell mommy born again. Don't touch me. 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 Mm -hmm. Man may do much by outward restraints. Only God can help them to stop sinning. It is a matter of exchanging our own strength with God's own. You are my strength when I Thank you. am weak. Hallelujah. You are the treasure what you that I seek. You are my only oh, all. Seeking you as a precious you. Love to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my Yeah. 
Glory be to God. What then does God require of us? Do not think that your crying <laughs> and complaint can force him to become sentimental. Complaint can force him to become sentimental and then come to a level so cheap. Jesus' objectivity is based, is founded on commitment and genuineness of faith. Of all graces, faith honors Christ most. Let's one say, of all graces, faith honors Christ most. Therefore, of all graces, Christ honors faith most. Whichever way you show your action, your complaints, whether you cry aloud, like Blambat Mail, Son of David, have mercy of me. Oh, Son of David, have mercy of me. Son of David, have mercy of me. Or you sit hopelessly. before your mountain, before your trouble, like a man at the pool of Bethesda who sat hopelessly. One thing is clear. If your action is genuine, Holy Spirit affects it. If your crying is genuine, Holy Spirit affects it. If your complaint is genuine, Holy Spirit affects it. Your worship must be pure. Your worship, hallelujah, must be pure. The requirement of purity must be kept. Sacrifice are to be offered from a pure heart. Tell your neighbor, sacrifice are to be offered from a pure heart. A heart that is pure. A heart that does not bear grudges. A heart that is humble and sincere. 
not a rebellious one. 